Welcome back to The Witcher Recaps right here at Comic Storium. My name is Benny and I'm normally the guy that narrates your favorite comic books and video games plot lines because it's something I like to do and people seem to like to use it to keep up on their favorite stories. Witcher is an amazing show on Netflix and because of that a lot more people are curious about the Witcher lore. Be it the video games 1, 2, and 3 or the comic books or the books. We are trying to tell you the storylines that you may not be aware of in Witcher lore to allow you to enjoy them and know more about Geralt. We've already done one of the comic books and Witcher 1, both of which will be in the playlist down below. But today we're going to give you the plot line to Witcher 2. And if you enjoy this and want more Witcher recaps, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that like button. And I'm going to apologize now in case I butcher any of the pronunciations as it's a fantasy novel, basically. It's, it's all over the place with pronunciations. Here we go. Geralt of Rivia awakens within the dungeons of the castle, hanging from the chains within the ceiling. He is quickly brought before Vernon Roch, the commander of the Blue Stripes, Tamaria's Special Forces Unit. Roch informs the Witcher that he is being held under the suspicion that he is the one who recently murdered King Foltest. Geralt, of course, denies this claim, and Roch demands to know everything that has led up to this moment. So in the past, following the attempted assassination of King Foltest by an unknown Witcher, Geralt had become the personal bodyguarded monster slayer to the king. A rank that held certain perks such as his own luxury tent while he awaited the orders from the king. It seemed that Foltest had had a relationship with Baroness Maria Luisa La Valente. They had had two children together, although those children were considered bastards. Foltest demanded that they be brought to him in Vizima. The Baroness refused and Foltest led his armies against her. At the behest of the king, Geralt fought alongside the Tamarian army to capture La Valente Castle although they were almost routed when a massive dragon attacked them. But during that assault, Geralt met Aaron, son of the Baroness in combat, but he chose to allow the young man to live, believing that too much blood had already been spilled. With that battle won, King Foltest is reunited with his children, but before Geralt can react, the king's throat was slit. The Kingslayer reveals himself to be another witcher before leaping from the castle window. As Geralt kneels before the body of Foltest, the rest of the king's men rush into the chamber, seeing the Witcher standing over the body of the man that he was charged to protect. With his story told, Geralt leans over the table to Roch. The commander believes him, yet knows that the people will demand blood for the death of their king. He assists Geralt in his escape, and outside the castle, the two meet with Triss Marigold, a powerful sorceress and friend of Geralt's. The three make their way down the river to the trade village of Flotsam. And along the way, Geralt and Triss are attacked by Lorvrith and his band of elven rebels known as the Scoia'tael. Luckily, Triss protects them with a magic shield and the two slowly make their way through the woods, with Geralt dispatching any elves that grew bold. Geralt and Triss learn that the Witcher Letho was working with the Scoia'tael. Arriving in the village of Flotsam, Geralt is shocked to discover that two more of his friends are about to find themselves dangling from the hangman's noose. Zoltan the Dwarf has been accused of aiding the elven rebels, while Dandelion the Bard is being accused of debauchery. Luckily, Geralt is able to convince the local commander to release his friends before they hang. While in Flotsam, Geralt takes on a contract to deal with a Chiron, a vast beast that had made its home near Flotsam for some time. Although the monster is usually quite docile, it had recently become enraged and had been attacking ships. While hunting the monster, Geralt also meets with Sia de Tanserville, another sorceress who is also trying to stop the Chiron. Geralt then sets out to convince Lorveth of Aletho's treachery once he discovers that the rogue witcher plans on betraying his elven comrades of the Scoia'tael. With the monster defeated, Vernon Roch arrives with the Tamarian soldiers that are loyal to him, and seeing that he is outnumbered, Letho kidnaps Triss and flees, forcing her to teleport away. Geralt must now decide to work with Roch and the Tamarian forces or side with Lorveth and his elven rebels. If he were to side with Lorveth, the two will sail upriver into the kingdom of Adiram. The two join forces with Saskia, leader of the local rebels, in her fight against the kingdom of Cadawin. Geralt will also search for Triss Marigold and Letho, and the rebels will eventually defeat Cadawin, and Geralt will learn that Saskia is in fact a dragon with the ability to take on human form. He also learns that she is being controlled by Philippa, another sorceress. Before Geralt can free Saskia from the witch's control, the two will teleport away, and Geralt and Lorveth are forced to follow. But wait! Should Geralt decide to side with Vernon Roch, the two also give Letho chase and sail for the same kingdom. There, they'll aid the kingdom of Kedwin with his battle against the rebels which are led by Saskia. 
Geralt manages to defeat the two Witcher assassins that have been sent against the king and learn that Scylla is in league with the sorceress Philippa, who is magically controlling Saskia, the rebel leader. Regardless of who Geralt fought alongside in the story, Philippa and Saskia will flee to Loch Munin, a city built on the river Pontar. Following them, Geralt and his friends will learn that the mages have called for a new magical ruling body meeting with a group of royalty within the city. And they learn that Philippa and Scylla plan on establishing their own ruling class, with Saskia as their personal weapon. Geralt manages to rescue Triss Marigold before the meeting of mages is attacked by Saskia in dragon form. And as Geralt attempts to apprehend Scylla, the sorceress tries to flee using her megascope a magical device made for teleportation. Unknown to the woman, though, Letho sabotages the device and the woman is caught within a magical current before it can kill her. Geralt is next forced to fight against Saskia despite his belief that dragons are not evil creatures, and with her defeated, the Witcher will decide whether to allow her to live. With Triss alive, the Council of Mages will continue and a new ruling body of magic is established, known as the Conclave. And with the day saved, Geralt finally confronts Letho, a Witcher from the School of the Viper. He must choose to fight Letho or let him leave, and regardless of the outcome, Geralt once again meets Atris and the two travel south, hoping to regain Geralt's lost memories. Now I know that the story got a little confusing towards the end of it, but that's because as this is a video game, there are multiple choices that you have to make, which leads to varying forms of our story. So I hope you enjoyed our recap, and I hope it helped you understand what was going on. I do apologize again for any egregious, massively mispronounced things. It's very hard to find a lot of these things actually pronounced, and I haven't played Witcher 2 in like 10, maybe 12 years. I remember playing it before I deployed to Afghanistan, so it's been a while. I hope you enjoyed our video. If you want the third part, please consider subscribing, giving this video a like. I'll see you next time right here.